everybody, my name is Rebea and I am really excited to be here for two reasons. The first reason is when I was a young college student, we would take road trips through my school, McNeese, to Houston every other semester. One semester we would go to New Orleans and check out the museums there, and the next semester we would come here, and this was always my favorite stop. And I would walk around the museum and I would go, wow, what would it be like to have your work in a space like this? So here I am. Second reason I'm happy to be here is because I actually used to work here. I was a fact team member, frequently asked questions. My most frequently asked question was where is the tunnel and where is the bathroom? <laughs> so if you know the space, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but my job was actually to learn how to talk about art, other people's art. So that was a very important experience. And it's one of the great things about the museum that I enjoy is the educational aspect. So here I am to talk about my art and I haven't seen it in a while and it's triggering all these memories, which is what I love about art and which is what I love about music too. Have you ever heard a song that you haven't heard in a while? And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I remember exactly where I was when I heard that. Similar things happen when I look at imagery because oftentimes I use people that I know. For example, when I saw this a while ago, I was like, oh, that's my friend Deshawn. And she was going through something really personal <clears throat> when this photograph happened, because it started off being a photograph, and then it became a drawing, and now it's actually a silkscreen print. Um, this drawing right here, or actually this print, this image came from a friend of mine sent me a photograph of the back of somebody's head and was like, oh, you would really like to draw this. And I did. I ended up drawing it on a big sheet of handmade paper. But that drawing was uh, donated to Tougaloo for their private collection. So I had saved a digital image of the drawing and I started to play around with it in Photoshop because I wanted to turn it into something a little bit different. And I was just playing around really. So I took the, um, the weave of the paper out I took the neck because this was the back of somebody's head and here was the neck there and I edited that out and it kind of triggered this new practice for me which was to make collages digitally. That's something I hadn't done before because usually I just drew <laughs> and I drew hair. One of the reasons I draw, draw hair is because I grew up in a hair salon. My mom owned one and when I was in high school, <laughs> after school every day I had to go to the beauty shop to help her out. Back then, you didn't have to have a license to work or touch somebody's head. So a lot of times I would take rollers out and the backs of people's head would look like sculptures almost. But that never really became a part of my art until I moved to Houston. I discovered an artist, J.D. Ojakaire, who is a photographer, Nigerian photographer, and his work is very important because he documents hairstyles and their meaning. And then I had this idea like, oh, well, I know a little bit about hair. Never thought about making art out of that. So that's when my practice switched over to a focus on hair and how we identify ourselves. And from there, I just kind of started remixing, sampling, if you will, from other people's work, like the image at the top. That is a drawing of an, a Native American Indian chief who had this beautifully braided cone at the top of his head, and I was mesmerized by it. So I started repeating it. It was really easy to do digitally. And I thought, wow, what would that look like as a drawing? And perhaps what would that look like as just a photograph printed out? And kind of sampling different ideas leads you to have choices at the end of that, and then you decide which choice works the best for you. So in this particular series, I thought they looked interesting when some of the detail was lost. So I wanted to see them and how they looked as silk screens. I am also next to a super duper great friend of mine. Her name is Ann Johnson. And Ann is my Rue sister. We're in a collective, a printmaking collective together and we've been friends for over 11 years. And we've always wanted to do a hip hop show together. So it's kind of, pretty cool that we end up being in an exhibition about DJ Screw and we're side by side in the show. This is a first for us both to be in a museum setting. So I wanted to talk briefly about this series called Fresh. So one of the things that I do and I did it to earn money 
gas money when I was in college was to braid hair and to do hair. So if you've ever had your hair braided, you know what it feels like to take a comb and part your hair. And I started um, thinking about my relationships with my friends because it's kind of intimate to be behind someone and to, to have these conversations while you're braiding hair. And you share secrets and you tell stories. And these are some very close friends of mine. It's my friend Renetta, my roommate at the time, Kenya, and this is my friend Deshaun. And I was like, hey, can I carve letters in the back of your head? <laughs> Not carving really, but you know. So the words, um, the word here, of course, says fresh. And in, in this series, I also um, jumble some of the letters around to say sisters, because I really felt kindred to my friends and they, they are my sisters. So. This is a, an example of when I decided that these images work best as photographs and that they shouldn't become drawings and they probably wouldn't work so well becoming silk screens because I didn't want to lose the detail. I wanted you to see the beautiful texture, curls, Deshaun was growing dreads at the time and I just I love the idea of texture. And in my drawings, I don't have a drawing to show you right now, but in my drawings, you can see that I love trying to capture the intricacies of braids and also many, many different textures. So be happy with the texture that you have because it makes great, great drawings. It feels amazing being in front of these albums. Um, I'm such a music head and I have a huge, huge collection not of albums, but I have a collection of cassette tapes. Um, so that kind of speaks to the generation that I, that I grew up in, where we were just collecting tapes left and right. But here we have the compact disc, the CD. So you have albums, I'm thinking cassettes, and here we have CDs. And the first time I ever heard of who DJ Screw even was, I found a CD. At the time I was working at a children's shelter and some of the teenagers there were listening to this guy named DJ Screw. And he was all the rage. And this is in Louisiana, this wasn't in Houston. And so, you know, it was not really my thing to listen to music slow down like that at first because I didn't get it. Because when <laughs> my Walkman would slow down, it meant the batteries were dead. So I was like, hey, is this, you know, what's, what's going on here? Like they're like, no, Rebea, it's supposed to be like that. And I was like, really? And I loved being sort of right there at the birth of something new and something different that would become this other thing. And just having that to reminisce um, about is a great connection to being in the exhibit. So I love that. Also that El Franco Lee painting right there is everything. 